Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash, who is in England. Uh, Jacob, one of the believers asked the question, is there a difference between the gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom? Okay. First of all, we have to be careful when we address this subject of the gospel of the kingdom. Some people have a wrong view of what that is. People who are caught up in post-millennialism, kingdom now theology, dominionism, the erroneous idea that the church is going to conquer the world for Christ before he comes. This is not what the scriptures mean by the gospel of the kingdom. Now, the gospel is described in different ways. Paul, at one place, personalizes it and calls it my gospel. In Isaiah 52 and in Ephesians 6, it's called the gospel of peace. In the Olivet Discourse, the gospel of the kingdom. Then, of course, the gospel of salvation. Gospel means good news. Evangelion in Greek, bisora in Hebrew. It's all the gospel. God becomes a man to take our sin, atone for it, and raise from the dead to give us eternal life. The just for the unjust. Substitutionary atonement. Propitiation. Justification. We're saved by grace through faith. Jesus takes our sin to give us his righteousness, dies our death to give us his life. That's the gospel. But the reason we have different terms explaining it, gospel of the kingdom, gospel of peace, gospel of salvation, my gospel, or the everlasting gospel, those things have to do with the character and manner in which the gospel is proclaimed. The gospel of the kingdom, specifically, is what we see most notably in Matthew's gospel and in the preaching of John the Baptist. Repent, the kingdom is at hand. It is where you use prophecy, eschatology, the return of the Lord coming, or the coming of the Lord getting closer. It is where you use those things to engage people evangelistically. The gospel of the kingdom is what we should be preaching now. We should be using the end time prophecy to reach the unsaved. Unsaved people all want to know the future. We live in a post-Christian, neo-pagan Western world. How do we evangelize people who now are apathetic, where their spirituality is colored by new age, not by traditional Judeo-Christian belief, where Roman Catholicism has been <clears throat> revealed to be saturated with pedophilia and corruption. Not that Roman Catholicism was ever the true gospel, it isn't. It's a sacramental gospel, which is false. But even evangelicism has been misrepresented and corrupted and discredited by the money preachers, by the word faith preacher, preachers. How do we make the gospel relevant in a post-Christian neo-pagan world? Unsaved people want to know the future. That is a reason for the explosion in the occult. We've said this before. They're going to astrologers, fortune tellers, etc. to know the future. We know the future. You tell unsaved people, look what's happening in Iran. Now look at Daniel 10. Look what's happening in Israel. Now look what Jesus said about Israel in Luke 21, 24. Look at the moral breakdown of society what Paul said the last days will be like in Timothy. Men will be lovers of self, etc. We use end-time prophecy to engage unsaved people in evangelistic dialogue. That is the gospel of the kingdom. Repent, the kingdom is at hand, the Lord is coming. It's all the same gospel, but it is presented, preached in a different character. Thank you so much for your question.
My name is Jacob Prash.